Welcome to Vintage Auto Garage. My name is Jay, and I'm going to talk about uh, alternators today. And I'm going to talk about uh, how to wire a one wire and a two wire um, configuration. And then I want to show you how to change a pulley because I get a lot of times I get calls about what's the easiest way to change the pulley on the alternator. So if you receive the alternator uh, and it was you need to change it from a 3 8 pulley to a to a 5 8 pulley. Uh, remember, the older cars had typically had a wider belt, which was a 5 8 inch pulley. Later on, they they changed most of you know to a to a 3 8 um, Also, on early Fords, they um, they used a uh, they used a pulley that had the fan mounted to the front of it on the generator. So. This is what we call the fan pulley, and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so so to change the, the pulley on almost every alternator, you need an impact wrench, okay? And all you need to do is hold on tight to the, uh, to the pulley, and, and it'll spin right off, okay? So you just take it off, and then just get your, get your pulley and put it on there if you're going to put the fan pulley on. You put the fan pulley on here like that, and then install the nut. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the 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 five eighths inch wide pulley on here, and put the nut on, and then I'm just going to reverse that process and hold on to it, and take my impact wrench like so, and and just hang on to it, and you're done. Okay, so that's how you change a pulley. All right, so the the way to wire these alternators, uh, there's two different ways. There's, there's, a, there's a two wire setup um, or a one wire. So newer cars typically used a one wire setup. And the reason why is because modern cars we drive every day or all, we drive all the time. Um, and an alternator requires voltage and residual magnetism or magnetism to be able to excite the field coils. So that's why the alternator needs to be connected to directly to a battery. And an alternator won't charge a dead battery. So if you have a, a, a real low or dead battery, the alternator is not going to charge it because the alternator actually needs, it needs the battery voltage for it to excite and for the field coils to work. Okay. And that's why a big difference between an alternator and a generator. A generator will charge a dead battery, but an alternator won't. So, uh, so let's first talk about um, the two wire setup. And, and most of the configurations that we do here at Vintage Auto Garage is we use a two wire. Uh, and, and again, uh, the, the main reason is, is that um, the, it ensures that the alternator is always going to turn on. It is, you know, if, it's not going to lose its residual magnetism. So if your car was stored for any period of time, it was real cold. A lot of times the alternator will lose that residual magnetism and it won't, it won't excite, it won't charge. Okay? But if you use this plug that I'm going to show you here, this is really simple. Um, and all of our alternators come as, again, as a one or two wire. So it's got a little spade connector in the back, probably has a little plug that you pull out. And you just install this connector in the back of that alternator, like so. Just plug it in. And now you have two wires. you got a red wire, and that's the sense wire. So that just goes on the back of the alternator. So that's going to sense the output of the voltage, and it tells the regulator to regulate. Remember, these are internally regulated. It does not require any external regulation. It, it, will, it will regulate the voltage based on the demand of the vehicle. So more demand, it'll put out more, more current. Less demand, less current. The voltage will stay the same, but the current will change. OK, so there's a, there, there's a white wire. And this white wire has a, 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 a lump in it, and that's, that's a diode. And basically, that's a one-way one electrical check valve. And it's, it, it allows the voltage to go into the alternator, not out. Okay, So it goes into the alternator. So we're going to take 12 volts, switch 12 volts, and we're going to put that on this, the end of this. Okay, So it's going to send 12 volts into the alternator. And what I mean by switched is when you turn the key switch on, you're going to get voltage. You don't want to have voltage all the time because you're going to end up 
run your battery down. Okay, it'll it'll trickle charge your battery down. So it's got to be it's got to be switched voltage. Now, there's two places you can install this. The first place is you can put it right on your coil. All right, because the coil has switch 12 volts going to the plus side. And I get a lot of calls that say that, you know, my engine won't start after they've done a conversion or a coil change or something. And they've left off that coil wire to the key switch because they're thinking that this white wire is going to excite the coil. But we're just using that as a connection point to be able to get the 12 volts to put it into the alternator. OK, so you can either put it on the plus side of the coil. And remember, coils are, are uh, polarity sensitive. Plus side goes to the key, uh, to the ignition switch. That's your 12 volts, and the negative side goes down to your distributor. Right? Don't get them backwards. Otherwise, your coil will not be very efficient. The, the other way to do this is to fish this up through the firewall and then put it right on the key switch. Uh, we actually are recommending that now to put it on the key switch versus the coil. And I know the instructions probably all say to put it on the on the coil just because that was an easy place to put it. But but what we're finding is and this doesn't happen all the time, but uh, you know it's it's it, it's it's rare, but it still happens. Is that you know as the coil is firing, it puts out transient voltage, and what happens is that transient voltage is then you know pulsating through this diode, and we've had the diodes short out. They don't open up; they end up shorting, it's closed. So then what happens is. Uh, you turn the key switch off and the alternator will back feed power up into the, the coil itself. So uh, that's the purpose of that diode. So the, so the engine will shut off. Because if you didn't have a diode, if you just went and got one of these uh, connectors and put a wire on it, you're going to probably find out when you turn, turn the key switch off, unless you have a neutral on your key switch, it, it's, it's not going to shut off. Okay? So if you do have that problem and your engine won't shut off, then just pull the plug out and see if the sh engine shuts off. And if the engine shuts off, then you know it is a bad diode. Or just take it off the coil. Can't even get this out of here. OK, so that's, that's the plug. Uh, now, this is, what, this is the charge wire. Um, and what we mean by that is that that connects to the back of the alternator in the same place. OK, and then this is. This is what keeps your battery charged. Okay, so this has got kind of two things going on here. One is when you're when you're first starting the the engine, it's going to take battery voltage and to excite the field coils, like I said earlier. Okay, and then once it starts to charge, now it's putting the voltage back into the battery. So this has to get connected to on a 12 volt. Um, negative ground car, this has to be connected to the positive side of the battery. So you, this is long enough you can take it down to the starter because that's a you got a battery cable down there. And this comes with all the little connectors. So you can you can put it there. You can put it on the battery side of the start solenoid if, if your car has that. Any place that you got 12 volts okay, from the battery direct. You don't want to you don't want to take it down to the I've had some guys put it on the um, on the horn relay, battery side of the horn relay. Well, that's just a little wire. It's like a you know a number fourteen wire going there. You, you you need to have you know a ten gauge wire to charge that battery. Okay, so I want to talk about um, kind of the output of these and and a little bit of troubleshooting. So. When you install your, your alternator, before you turn it on, what you want to do is get your, take your digital voltmeter and test the voltage at the back of the alternator to ground. And you, you really can't use a trouble light with this. You have to actually use a, a digital voltmeter or a good voltmeter um, because you should be getting 12.6 volts here because a fully charged battery is 12.6. A dead battery is actually 12.1 or 2, I think. But if it reads 12, 12 volts, it's dead. So uh, a fully, you have to make sure your, your battery is fully charged. And I, I get calls and say, well, I just bought the battery. And then I have them test it. And they find out the battery, you know, because it sat around for a while, it, it, it lost its charge. So put it on a trickle charger before you start your car. Uh, so test, the, test the, the voltage at the back. Make sure that you got 12.6 volts. All right. Then 
uh, go ahead and start your engine. And you may have to bring the RPM up a little bit. Like we talked earlier, you got to have it, you know, the turn on speed high enough. So you're actually getting, you're getting charge voltage out. And then you should be getting around 14.1 volts coming out of the back. Cause that's what the regulator set for 14.1. Cause it's got to be higher uh, voltage than the battery. Okay. And then if, if you've got, if you got that, then you know that your alternator is working and you're good to go. Now there's one other feature about this plug. If you happen to have a car that had, um, that has a light in the dash, that's the charge light. So, you know, the, the old generator charge light and some of the later cars had that. If you wire this, instead of wiring this, you know, to your coil, you write to your key switch, you can wire this to one side of that light bulb and then the other side of that light bulb to your key switch. So, uh, when the engine's off, the light bulb will be on. And it's when you turn the engine on, when it starts to charge, then the voltage will equalize and turn the light bulb off. So, uh, you know, most of the older cars didn't have that light, but if you happen to be putting an alternator on that had a charge light, then that's, that's how you would use it. I, I, I think I, I, I skipped over one important part. When you're installing this um, 10 gauge wire, always make sure that you put the fuse in this wire and put the fuse closest to the battery source, wherever it's practical, put it. So you cut the wire and then install. We, we have these little fuse kits and it comes with two fuses. Um, and you always want to fuse this because remember, this has got, this is battery voltage all the time to the, to the alternator. If something happened internal to the alternator, you would just go dead short from the, from the battery right to ground. And if that happened when you weren't around or something, I mean, you could have uh, you know real problems. So always put a fuse or put a fusible link. You know, a lot of the, you know, the modern cars typically all put fusible links in it, but you know, older cars uh, and 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 the fusible links a lot of times they weren't long enough. So you know, you want to use this with a you know with a fuse, and always make sure the fuse is sized right. So if it's a hundred amp alternator like this one is, the fuse would be 125. So it's about 25 percent more. Okay, so you want to make sure that it's it's not too small because that way it could end up blowing. Um, uh, so let's say you put a 90 amp fuse in here and you're you had demand of you know 95 amps, it probably blow the fuse. So we always want to make sure that fuse is is big enough. Okay, so we covered um, the one wire, we covered the two wire, we covered the important part of safety and the fuses and how to change the uh, the pulley. So uh, Hopefully this was uh, educational for you. And if you have any questions, uh, just please give us a call and or visit us our website. Thank you very much.